Have you ever downloaded a mod car for a Seto Corsa, excitedly fired up a practice session on your favorite toge, only to be gravely disappointed by the first curve because the car doesn't drive exactly how you expected it to in your imagination? Well, I got the fix for that. Kinda. Before we jump into the tutorial though, I have a couple disclaimers. Um, number one, this only works with cars that haven't been encrypted by CSP or Custom Shaders Patch. Number two, you'll need Content Manager in order to unpack data ACDs. And finally, before you go sharing your new data swap car that you just finished and you're really proud of, double check with the original mod creator that they're okay with you re-uploading uh, edited version of their car. Not everybody is okay with that. So if you are going to be modifying something and they don't want to have you redistributing it, respect them and keep it privately for yourself. Now that that's out of the way, let's jump right into the tutorial. First, we'll want to jump right into the content tab cars section. Uh, we'll search for the car that we want to swap. Once we find the car, we'll go down to the bottom of the cars content info area where it has a couple little options and we'll choose unpack data if we have to. So that's now going to pop open a new window that has the data ACD unpacked into the different various I and I's. Let's open one of these files up in Notepad++ just to make sure that the file is not corrupted and it's actually readable and usable. Now that the unpacked data checks out and looks good, we can move on to cloning the car. Now what we'll want to do is get into the Windows Explorer, open up our car folder here, and we'll go back one more level to where we're looking at all the cars that we have installed in Asado. We'll want to find the car that we're going to be swapping the physics on. Right click, hit copy, and then paste the new version here in the same folder. Uh, what that's going to do is it's going to give us a new folder with that same car's title name, and then it'll say dash copy. You can see and verify that in Content Manager by looking on your car section here. Looking through the list of names, you can see a green dot next to a duplicated name here. The little green dot means the car has been installed recently within the last two weeks, if I remember correctly. Uh, so you can verify that you got your new car showing up in the right place. Now we can go back to our Windows Explorer, right click and rename the folder that has copy at the end of it. So that is our new car and we can call this whatever you want to call it. For the purposes of the video, I'm just going to call this one the Data Swap Example S15. Notice that the car title with the green dot didn't change in Content Manager yet. That's still set within the data. We'll fix that in a second. Right now, I'm going to check to make sure we got the right files, which we did. Now I can delete the data ACD. If we tried to unpack this data ACD now after renaming the folder, it will no longer unpack correctly and it would basically be encrypted text that literally is unreadable. So that's why we unpack the ACD in the original car before we copy it. With all that squared away, we can jump back into Content Manager and rename our car by clicking up here on this uh, title area, type in our new name and we should be good to go. Then what we'll do is we'll come down here back to the bottom and we'll hit this button that says replace sound Content Manager will reference the car's engine INI &I, and then give you a pre-filtered selection of engine sounds from Kunos cars that will fit your range. Uh, alternatively, you can go navigate through like you're picking cars normally and find another car. So what we're going to do is we're going to go find the WDTS S15 or S14 and use that for the sound. Now that the sounds are taken care of, we can jump down and hit the folder button here. Uh, this will open up the folder's location on our hard drive so we can look straight at the raw files. Once in the data folder, let's right click on car.ini and edit with Notepad++ or traditional Notepad if that's what you're using. With our text editor set up, let's now jump over and go to our donor car. Uh, I'm going to use the WDT Street S14. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to unpack the data. And with the data folder unpacked, we can go in and open up some of these uh, INIs in Notepad++ or our text editor. So I'm going to open up the car.ini and then I'm going to get a split view set up here. To do that, we'll right click on the tab up here and click uh, move to other view. That will open a split view here of both the different car.ini's and we can compare and contrast the values and copy and paste from one to the other. Uh, so right off the bat, we'll start off with this version number. And then a little bit lower here, we'll check out the total mass and the inertia values. You can see there's a little bit of a difference here. And so we'll copy the total mass and inertia from the 
WDT S14 on the right hand side and we'll paste that on the left hand side into our S15 that we're working on. With those values changed we can now look at the control section and the two fuel sections. Uh, the main one here being the control section because that interprets how the car steers. Sometimes if you miss copying the control section uh, you'll go to load in to drive your new car and the steering will actually be inverted. You'll steer left and the car's wheels will steer right. So you want to make sure you copy this control section. This is one of the key points. I'm going to open up and drag in the suspensions.ini of my S15 that I'm working on here. Just drag that up into the left hand side. And then I'm going to go grab the suspensions of the WDT S14 and drag that to the right hand side. This now has us all set up to begin editing the suspension INIs. So again, we're going to start checking out some of the data here. Notice up on the top, let's check that version number. When copying data between cars, make sure that the version number of the INIs are the same. With that taken care of, we can now take a look at the wheelbase and the CG location. Depending on the models that you're swapping between, you may need to adjust this wheelbase number in order to get the car wheels to line up with the wheel wells on the 3D model. So just have to pay attention to that. The other thing is, and we'll cover this later on, is how to adjust the CG location and how you have to graphically adjust the car for that. So for now, just make sure you set the correct CG locations and we'll get into graphic offsets later. I'm going to grab this damage section here down on the bottom and tidy up the INI here of the S15 a little bit. And then highlighting from bottom to the top, I'm going to grab the rear suspension and the front suspension in one shot and copy and paste that across. We are going to ignore the graphic offset section for now. Like I said, we'll be visiting that later on in the video. So for now, we got our suspensions INI set up. So let's uh, drag and drop our tires.ini for the two cars in here. Remember, we got the S15 on the left and the uh, S14 from WDT Street on the right. Now we'll want to pay attention to the radius value here. So if it's drastically different and you swap the, the values, uh, you can have the car look like it's either floating or sunken into the ground. So when you're checking out your tires.ini and they're drastically different, just leave your original value in and swap the rest of the tire data. That way you can change your tire data without breaking the graphics of your mod. In the case of my example, however, I don't have to worry about it. The values are pretty close that it's not gonna affect it graphically. So I can just copy the whole chunk of data over in one shot and not have to worry about it. After copying the data over, let's not forget to save. And now we're done with the tires.ini. Up next, we're gonna start transferring over files this was about it for all the stuff that we had to manually adjust until we get to the graphics. So let's go back and look at our data files here. Let's go to our WDT Street S14. And then we're going to copy all the files that I have over here on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, that's going to be the aero, brakes, drivetrain, engine, electronics.ini's, uh, the fin LUTs, however your car might not have them. Uh, the final.rto and maybe the ratios.rto this car doesn't have a ratios.rto uh, we'll look at a power.lut a setup.ini t-curve.luts these can be named a bunch of things just look for t-curve uh, we want the throttle.lut uh, there should be wear luts or in this case it's the tires uh, underscore wdt we'll look for a wear lut and then all aoa uh, LUTs that has to do with wings and arrow um, Once all the files are selected we can copy and then paste them into the s15 data folder or the car that we're donating the physics to That should be all that we need to copy for data files So let's go open the car into content manager showroom and let's start adjusting the graphic offsets The first thing we'll want to do is go over here and click the little car icon on this menu pop out and then go down and select align by data this will position the wheels where they should be in relation to the car data when you're actually loaded in game 
it doesn't actually take into account the weight of the car so there could be a little bit of a difference when you go in and out between showroom and in-game that means we'll want to check the adjustments that we make here in this section and actually load it in-game before we finalize all of our settings we can also check this suspension box and it'll show us what the geometry of the suspension looks like in the game with everything set up to visualize our changes we can now go ahead and start adjusting our graphic offsets there's many different ways we can do this with either suspension data or in the graphic offsets however we're going to focus mainly on graphic offsets because we don't want to change how the car actually handles we're just adapting the graphics to the physics of our donor car I'm going to start off with some rotation adjustments here because I want to bring that front end down a little bit. Every time you save your adjustment in your text editor, it should automatically show up in our content manager showroom so you can live edit and see what your changes are doing. And now that I got this front end settled down, it's pretty apparent that the front wheel is a little out of alignment with that front wheel well and the back may be shifted a little bit too. So I'm going to adjust this last value on the graphic offset here and that's going to move the model forward or backwards. This is how you correct your CG value changing because if you change your CG value that will actually move the model forwards or backwards visually and changing this graphic offset can correct that. Now that we're happy with how the car looks graphically in showroom, let's jump out of the showroom and check how it looks visually in game. Now before we actually jump in game, I'm going to change the UI values to actually represent the data now. So let's go click these three dots next to the dyno graph and then we can hit calculate by data. Now this will show us the actual torque values and the horsepower values of what our engine INI and our data in the car actually have. And now we hit, you know, hit OK and we can see the dyno graph changed a little bit and now our numbers are accurate. A quick and easy way to get us set up for driving is to go over here and double click on our car's name and that will automatically select our car in our driving tab. And since the track I have selected has a relatively even pits, I don't have to worry about changing the track. Just make sure whatever track you pick has a relatively flat pit so you can see your suspension at an even level and make sure your ride height looks okay. Now that the car is loaded here in the pits, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the drive button again. And I'm going to hit the button F7 to go into my free cam, float around here and adjust the view so I can check out the ride height. Boy, does this thing look like it's sitting like a 4x4. We'll take a look at our fitment here as well for our offset, and it looks like we can use a little bit of love there as well. So with that confirmed, I'm going to jump back out and go into Content Manager. Uh, it looks like the Content Manager uh, aligned by data and the in-game view are actually pretty much the same so we can go adjust fine tune in content manager showroom and be all set back here in content manager showroom i got the aligned by data turned on and i'm going to go ahead and adjust this middle value of the graphic offset which allows us to position the model vertically I'm pretty happy with where I have it sitting right now, uh, ride height wise, and it looks like I can do a little bit of adjustment to get the fitment better. So next up I'm going to jump into the suspensions.ini, scroll down to the bottom and adjust the individual graphic offsets for the wheels and the suspensions. This may take a little bit of a trial and error, so remember every time you save the file it should automatically update in showroom to show you what you've changed. And since we're doing this wheel by wheel, don't forget to adjust the right front wheel as well. You may have to mirror or just adjust the values uh, individually just to make sure everything lines up. And don't forget to adjust the suspension offset the same amount that you have adjusted your wheel offset. That will adjust the brake caliper the same amount that you adjusted your wheel. Let's flip around back here and get the back fitment dialed in a little bit better. That back's looking pretty dialed in right now. Let's check out the front. 
front's looking pretty good. I think we'll call that good for now. We'll save that file. I think it's time to jump back in for one more check. Jump into our free cam. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And that, my friends, is how you data swap a car on a set of Corsa. We'll close out the video here with this test run clip. Uh, this is when I was verifying that all the data files were working correctly, which they were. And since this is all WDT Street S14 data, the car drives exactly how I would expect it to. Now, one common thing people run into when doing data swaps is after they change the folder name and the car name, they'll go ahead and try to drive the car and all of a sudden the sound won't work or the car will crash the game. So you gotta make sure you replace that sound every time you change your name or your folder. Can't remember which one it is, but it's always best to do it after both of them. If you stuck around this long, I hope the video's helped you, so go ahead and hit that like button to you know let me know. And I'll see y'all in the next video.